chapter 4. So Solomon was king over all Israel, and these were his high officials. Azariah, son of Zadok, was the priest. Eli Horeph and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, were court secretaries. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was commander of the army. Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. Azariah, son of Nathan, presided over the district governors. Zabud, son of Nathan, a priest, was a trusted advisor to the king. Ahishar was manager of palace affairs. Adoniram, son of Abda, was in charge of the labor force. Solomon also had twelve district governors who were over all Israel. They were responsible for providing food from the people for the king's household. Each of them arranged provisions for one month of the year. These are the names of the twelve governors. Ben-Hur, in the hill country of Ephraim, Ben-Diker, in Mekaz, Shaalbim, Beth Shemesh, and Elon Beth Hanan, Ben Hezed, in Aruboth, including Sokoth and all the land of Hefer, Ben Abinadab, in Naphoth Dor, he was married to Tephath, one of Solomon's daughters, Beana, son of Ahilud, in Taanach and Megiddo, all of Beth Shan near Zarathan, in Jezreel, and all the territory from Beth Shan to Abel Mehola and over to Jokmian. Ben Giber in Ramoth Gilead, including the towns of Jair, named for Jair son of Manasseh in Gilead, and in the Argob region of Bashan, including sixty great fortified cities with gates barred with bronze. Ahinadab, son of Edo, in Mahanaim. Ahimaaz in Naphtali, he was married to Basimath, another of Solomon's daughters. Beana, son of Hushai, in Asher and in Aluth. Jehoshaphat, son of Parua in Issachar, Shimei, son of Eli, in Benjamin, Geber, son of Uri, in the land of Gilead, including the territories of King Sihon of the Amorites and King Og of Bashan. And there was one governor over the land of Judah. The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They were very contented with plenty to eat and drink. King Solomon ruled all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines as far south as the border of Egypt. The conquered peoples of those lands sent tribute money to Solomon and continued to serve him throughout his lifetime. The daily food requirements for Solomon's palace were 150 bushels of choice flour, 300 bushels of meal, 10 oxen from the fattening pens, 20 pasture-fed cattle, 100 sheep or goats, as well as deer, gazelles, roebucks, and choice fowl. Solomon's dominion extended over all the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River from Tipsha to Geza, and there was peace throughout the entire land. Throughout the lifetime of Solomon, all of Judah and Israel lived in peace and safety, and from Dan to Beersheba, each family had its own home and garden. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his chariot horses and 12,000 horses. The district governors faithfully provided food for King Solomon and his court each during his assigned month. They also brought the necessary barley and straw for the royal horses in the stables. God gave Solomon great wisdom and understanding and knowledge too vast to be measured. In fact, his wisdom exceeded that of all the wise men of the East and the wise men of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including Ethan, the Ezraite, and Heman, Kalko, and Darda, the sons of Mechol. His fame spread throughout all the surrounding nations. He composed some 3,000 proverbs and wrote 1,005 songs. He could speak with authority about all kinds of plants, from the great cedar of Lebanon to the tiny hyssop that grows from cracks in a wall. He could also speak about animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. And kings from every nation sent their ambassadors to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. 